got it. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to back to the Reimagine Together conversation series where every week we are talking about um, what new paradigm leadership is, what sort of new paradigm societies can emerge when we start to find that within ourselves. So you can join the conversation to look at your own leadership development and also how that changes how we operate as a collective and what potentials, opportunities, possibilities start to emerge as we change ourselves. And today's conversation, I have one of my great friends. We have a series of conversations that we've been doing, uh, Dr. Leila Alhua Al Alwan. <laughs> Sorry, Leila. <laughs> And with uh, Layla, we're talking about expanding the mind. Layla is a specialist in uh, awareness intelligence and how to develop your own awareness, what that really means and how it can impact your life. So today's conversation, we are going to uh, explore a few things because we're in a very interesting moment in time and we always want to speak to that uh, and really talk about awareness's role right now in how to find calm within the self in chaos, in chaos. So thank you, Leila, for joining again. Thank you for having me again, Carly. I'm very happy to be a uh, part of these conversations. And uh, I see it as, yes, in this chaos, uh, it's, it's sort of, a place where we can make sense of the chaos, right? For me, myself, and hopefully for those people who are listening to our conversations, uh, to have some glimpse from our conversation, um, to make sense of the chaos that they are living, reorient through it. And um, as I was telling you just before we started, right? It's like, this time feels like, a deja vu and uh, in, in a way um but it's been a long time i haven't felt it where i feel like i'm, I'm in the dark uh I, I need to get out from where i am i do not know where to go exactly um i have awareness of, of what i have around me but my awareness is like i'm not sure i i, I i'm lacking some sort of the extra awareness of the outside world, right? So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm having uh, to um, sense my way and and move, at least there is a movement. There is a movement that I, I, I am doing something, sensing uh, this is a wall, okay, that's not taking me anywhere, you know? Uh, that's, that's the, is there a door, a doorknob maybe here, you know? <laughs> I can't come out, or maybe that's a window. Well, how does it feel, right? And, and, until I figure out like my way and, 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 and I see, or maybe the switch, the light switch, right? Yeah. So, uh, so it's like, that's how I see sometimes um, the, the chaos around me. It's like, there are a lot of things going on, right? But, but for us, ourselves, it's like, we are not sure which direction we go to. We are not sure what our goal or what's, what's let's say our purpose or what do we even want or, or, or how do we get it? Hmm? Yeah, no, I mean, I was gonna add to this moment of a lot of conversations that I've been experiencing for myself very similarly and with many friends and guides um all you know kind of speaking to different, uh, different parts of this journey but everyone going through very similar things right now and um, and i do want to add the layer of talk about the outside not saying that you know this is something that everyone has to believe in by any means but we have we are going through a very big transformation that whether you are highly logical and you just want to look at the last 50 years and go, okay, the age of disruption was predicted just simply based on uh -huh. you know, the pace by which we can move and the exposure that we have to each other at this moment in time. So like very, very, very practical, easy to wrap our brains around um, that we can see which trajectory we've been moving into. And this is highly chaotic because everyone now um, can have a voice. Uh, we become more aware of the information landscape that we've been in 
And, um, and now we're, we're entering a new sort of information landscape and how to process that new information landscape, which is very challenging and none of us have really been aware. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Being said, no, just tell me what is, please. <laughs> Somebody has it, right? <laughs> Somebody, mom, dad. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's it, that's, the, that's, that's what's causing the chaos even more because now we are getting information from everywhere. Right. And so that's one well, that's the and is everybody's telling us where to go and it's like here 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 is like uh, okay which one do I believe <laughs> and that's what you know exactly I think this moment in time and from a spiritual perspective or practical however we want to look at it I do tend to have a very strong spiritual lens meaning something that is far beyond what we can understand with our five senses right now but um, at the same time we're being forced to go within ourselves because when everything else collapses around and you can no longer trust mom and dad uh -huh. you, can i trust the neighbor can i trust the neighbor's doc can i trust the doc over here can i trust this person can i who's who's the right financial resource wait but he's supposed to know what to do wait but i don't really like his policies wait what what about no you somebody and we're so used to, we've been um, very <laughs> designed and trained to look for the answers outside of ourselves. Sure. And that, um, it doesn't mean that we ignore information. It doesn't mean that, you know, we don't reference and develop. But this is part of critical and creative thinking, which is not easy and, and really is not usually practiced in a lot of our education um programs it's, it's really at all <laughs> no exactly i mean it's, it's truly about regurgitation and, mm -hmm. and and mimicking and understanding you know institution structures it's a lot of it, it is not um uh actually i have to share this because it was so funny <laughs> but just to add a little bit of humor and it's kind of on the, the chaos thing but we were talking about um how we have not been trained how to feed ourselves, shelter ourselves, uh, work for ourselves. Like, it's, seriously, it's like if, if structure goes down, you're like, wait, what, what do I do now? <laughs> I can't do anything for myself. And so I was thinking, like, it'd be so funny. We have, like, what, like Westerners, like, knocking on the doors of, like, Indi like uh, you know, indigenous reservations and stuff and be like, ah, oh, guys, real sorry. <laughs> real sorry um can i set up a little tv over there and i will help you with anything and also just teach me how to shelter myself teach me how to feed myself so teach me how to think for myself think me how to teach me how to be wise teach me how to connect with the nature because i am completely lost with no idea what to do if i can't take my normal job and live in an, the world that i've been trained to live in yes 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 and and you know what i'm thinking now i'm thinking that just a few people are going to do what you just said, actually. The rest are just going to be sitting down, probably trying to poke their phones, you know. Oh, my phone is dying. I don't have internet. <laughs> Others are just like, uh, the world is collapsing and they are just going to give up. Others, they are just going to go and maybe steal or do something or whatever, you know. Uh, and, and, and it's it's the few people who are prone or who are more have wisdom within them, they will go and ask for help. Mm. And they will ask, teach me, give me awareness. And that, um, as we talk about this moment in time of chaos, so this is what it looks like. And I think we're all experiencing it individually, um, on a personal note, a lot of relationships falling apart, a lot of, um, uh, you know, we are, we're having to face death in a way we also have not been trained how to do. So we have a very unhealthy relationship with grieving and the end and mm -hmm. all of these things. We're getting faced with all of our shadow, all of our darkest fears. Um, and then, and that's on a personal note, our stability is being threatened because economically there's a you know, an impact that, mm -hmm. you know, unless well, anyways, we're, we're aware, we don't need to get, but that's, um, you know, we have that all on a personal note, 
then we see a, a world that is at each other's throats mm -hmm. and, and forcing this tension as mm -hmm. well. Whether you agree or you don't, it's just that you feel this. I mean, I was just bawling the other day. Just I was like, I can't take the fighting. Anymore. I just I can't. I can't take it. I'm going to throw up. Like it's making me so sick. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's you know on a global scale. And then we think about so this is the age of disruption. And I like to think of it as ooh, shaking people all the way down to the core of yeah. what really is and who we are and how to transform and how to find this center in, in the South because you're not going to get it anywhere else, anywhere else. And the more we try, the, the more stressful it becomes. Very true. So as we look at that journey of coming, embracing the age of disruption, embracing chaos as an opportunity, as I think you mentioned with me, shed it. Whatever's got to go, shed it. Shed it within mm -hmm. itself. Shed it and, and let it go, as I like to say, kindly, as kindly as possible. We don't need to do this. But... Um, but and we bring our attention to the self, which is a, a journey of awareness. So, but it's, I would love to hear just some of your thoughts on, like, for you, even personally, how are you using your awareness? How are you helping? How is it? What is that looking like for you right now? Yeah, you, when you were talking, I was I was reminded of uh, a lecture I gave just last week. Uh, and it was sort of a, a simulation for a lecture, like I was, uh, I was uh, on, a, on a job interview, but it was also, I was making it to be a lecture that whomever is listening, uh, the interviewers are going to be benefiting from. And it's, it's directed to, let's say, if I'm going to teach my students to. And I was talking about the human leadership. So what is the human leadership, right? It's like, we know about leadership that you need to be motivational, you need to have a purpose, you need to have a vision, you need to, you know, um, make make the, the masses move so then they could go work together and, and do something. But, and, and probably, I mean, I haven't read about it a lot, servant leadership is to serve these people who are, you are going to uh, lead, right? rather than just lead them. And I would say the human leadership has also the teaching component, the training and coaching component that you need to teach and train those people, not only serve them, because also some people, if you serve them, you just enable them to be, you know, uh, lazy, let's say. And the most important basis of all in the human leadership is the understanding. The understanding of ourselves and other humans. Mm. Because if you do not understand, how can you serve someone you do not understand? Right. What are you gonna serve them with? Or help them with, or teach them? Like if you don't understand what you're teaching and what they need to be taught or what they need to be co coached in and trained, how, how would you do it? Right? And the understanding goes, as you said, into the self. Like the human leadership is, is about all of us, but all of us are the same. We are still individual, individuals, and it all starts within ourselves. And if I'm gonna be thinking of how how to understand others, I need to first understand it myself and be very honest, mm. very honest and open, open with myself. It's been what's going on with me in my life. And as you said, it's like there are people on we just discussed, there are people who are in this time of chaos, they are not going within themselves. Mm -hmm. They are looking outside, probably you know, uh, criticizing what's going on. They are talking about what's going on. They are complaining about what's going on. They are fighting about what's going on. But 
ra rarely they would go with themselves and say, okay, this is happening here. What do I do? Where is my role to make things better for myself and the people around me? Mm -hmm. Right? It's like, it's not about me going and making necessarily um, a huge movement. I mean, it could be, sure, but it, 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 I need to do the movement within myself. Right. First. First. Yeah. Right. So, so how do I do that? Right. And, and, and as I told you, um, I've been feeling lately that I need to shed things, shed my skin, shed, shed, like this chaos is making me feel like I need to grow and it's not easy. It's painful to grow. That is what is so no misunderstood. Not personal. It is always painful to grow. Yes, right. Okay. And to shed the old skin. And I remember last time I felt this way was when I left my country. Mm. It was a huge move and I had to go through so much pain, right? To shed that skin, that, that small cloth or skin that I was in, I was raised in. So then I can't expand. And now I'm feeling that again. Yes. And I was surprised. I was like, you would think that, you know, um, I shed my skin enough, right? I was like, that's it. I have changed, blah, blah, blah. I don't need it anymore. And lo and behold, here I am again, feeling the same feelings. Yeah. Feeling that something needs to be done. Something like I am stagnating here. I have no idea what needs to be done, but I have the idea that something needs to be done. And, and that's when my ra radar, basically, my awareness radar is, is just being wide open and receptive, right? It's like, I don't know what I need to be aware of. I do not know where I need to, to focus my awareness. So I just need to be open. And, and I guess trust my antenna, right? Or, or, or even trust the process of finding, process of, of researching, right? I, am, I need to research. What is it that needs to be done? And, and look into my life. What are the levels that I need to change or grow in? What skin that I need to shed? I mean, and usually it, it really touches all of our, our lives, relationships like place of sort of safety or or you know uh, stability you know uh, beliefs um, things we thought that we know or or we valued or it's all these things that really it, it becomes well as if you are shaken being shaken is like that None of that is really important other than you are as a person growing. Yes. Yes. And that's why it's so painful. And being aware doesn't make it less painful. It's just make you that you are able to deal with it more calmly, more acceptingly. And doesn't mean that you will not have emotions, you will not have anger, you will not be crying, you will not feel frustrated. I mean, I feel all these things. Was, the past week was <laughs> one of these times when I was like, oh, my God, I wish there was something, you know, um, a, a book or, or, or a protocol that is written, you know, how you do these things, right? <laughs> well, I was like, well, where to go? I want a map, you know? I was like, oh, go there, you know? Just like you said, I wanted answers because it's not easy to search for it within yourself and just keep trying and trying and trying. Yeah. But I was like, well, no answer is, is making me happy, as you just said also. So it's like, okay, I just need to try. I'm accepting that I need to try and I'm aware of it. So just buckle up and <laughs> go on, you know?
Yeah, yeah. And sometimes we don't get, you know, for a while, uh, because we, we can be so tempted, and I know I've had this in many different phases of my shedding as well, like in, in transformation, which yes, right now it's just happening at a pace and from all sides the, in a way that's never happened before because it's it, because now it's not just within my life, it is also within the greater collective mm -hmm. society. So, you know, before it was kind of like, well, I'll go through instability, but at least, you know, I'm still American from exactly. this area. Exactly. The world at that point in time, as is, still made sense to me. Now it doesn't. <laughs> now it's like, oh, I see why it's all got to come down. Again. Yeah. It's like everything is crumbling. <laughs> and whatever you know, it's like, oh, my God. I know. And, and this is when it's like, oh, damn it. I kind of miss when it was just my life and it's not true. my world. It's very true. Yeah, um, things were so easy, right? <laughs> well, I had a, you know, similar to what you're saying. So this last week, um, we were going through a lot of different shifts, energetic shifts, things that are, you know, sometimes less recognized, but literally some very big healing triggers being, um, uh, August has been talked about for being a, a very, very, very intense boiling point month for a lot of people in, the, in this climate. Mm -hmm. And, um, and literally, literally also in the climate, I would say. <laughs> well, yeah. And it's always mirrored on all levels. That's the funny thing about uh, spirit, like esoteric understanding. Spirit. Yeah. It's, but anyways, the last week for me as well, I was just like, I was crying. And I probably haven't, I haven't really cried. And like, and I've gone through a lot in the last few years. And I really hadn't grieved, I guess. Um, and I got hit by these waves. And my heart was just hurting and I was missing like just when it, when things made more sense, you know, mm -hmm. just that, like a child that's just like, I just want mom's arms for a minute. Mm -hmm. or that, or just that seeking that safety and that security of uh, that, that we do, you know, and it is, it's an inner child wound and it's, it's, it's triggering in a lot of ways. And, and I was seeking also an understanding of the past and, and past relationships that were beautiful and amazing. And it just hurt me so much to think about what was lost. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here and I wake up one morning and it's like, I've got my one hand on the vine to move forward. And the vine to move forward is what I've been wanting to move forward on for years. It's been coming into my con, you know, it's starting these sort of off grid communities and uh, moving into uh, different ways of living outside of the system, outside of the system as exists, and to start building, start working on it. And I don't know exactly how it's going to go, you know, but I've known that it, it's been very clearly coming to me for quite a while. And it's like these opportunities are right here. And I'm like holding on to this front vine. And then I've got the vine of the past and, and an understanding of this world, of, this, of the old paradigm, all the stuff that I've been like, yeah, it's got to go. It's gotta. But the truth is I'm still ingrained in it too. It's hard to let go of. Even, for, even, even when you're somebody that's prepared most of your life or been thinking differently most of your life, it's still... Mm -hmm. Please, I don't know what's forward. I don't yes. know. It's a lot of unknowns. And I think we're all going through like this. Like, yes. like <laughs> I don't know. Torn. Torn the <laughs> I don't know what's forward. It's all a mess. It's all a mess. It's all a mess. And as, as you said, uh, wanting safety. Like, I mean, a couple of things were key words there in which you said grieving and wanting a safety. Wanting a safety, and as I mentioned in, in uh, our last uh, conversations, is, is, is instinct. Like, it's for us. We want to have safety. We are afraid to, to lose our, our safety, our worth. Our, so it's like, it's all that fear is grappling us right it's, it's it's making us feel like the, the kid that wants you know mommy's uh, arms and feel like everything is going to be okay mm. because everything is being torn around us everything we know the basis like as you said even if your life has been changing what's around you was stable now everything on every level is chaotic yeah. and 
And it feels like when you look outside yourself, that's when it feels like, oh my God, that that's not safe. What, where do I go? I want to keep into holding into the past, the place where I knew, and it was it's 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 known. So even if it's bad, it's known and it feels First safe. Now, yeah. And it feels good now because because you know compared to unknown completely it's that's oh that's evil you know uh, i do not know i have no idea where i'm gonna go so so the past is gonna always be but but the grieving the grieving process is basically and, and i noticed i have i have had experience real grieving meaning that i have lost a loved one mm -hmm. and i went through the grieving process which nobody told me at the time what it is going to be. But I mean, looking now in hindsight, I, I see how it enacted itself in, in my life. Amazing stages, in amazing stages, right? Like first, the denial. You, you do not want to let go. You do not want to let go of that what, what, what's gone what was, or the person who, who died. It's like you don't want to believe that they are gone. Like you are between... The, 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 the sadness that they are gone and the knowledge in your mind and the denial, no, 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 they are not. They are still here. They are around me. They, they are going to come back. At least that's how it happened to me, right? And then after you, after you start, of course, like they are never going to come back. And then you feel like anger. The anger at, like, I don't know whatever, whoever took them, you know, whether it's, it's like, you know, it was a, a car accident, it was a God, or you want to put it on, on God, you want to put it in the people or the doctors, there is anger that needs to be directed at someone and something for losing something that you think or you feel that yours or, or important to you. And, and then with that, that's mixed also with after it is is the uh, regret, regret of what you've missed with with that person. That's it, right? Or regret what you've said or what you've done or all of these things you wanted to change them. You want to to you wish that time goes back and you are going to do things differently, right? Like you said, your relationships, the beautiful relationships, the loss of them. And then when it sets in, then we have another sadness, but then there will be that sort of the sadness that we are accepting all of it because it's out of our hand. It has to happen. Exactly. Exactly. Then we can go forward. And yeah. then I, I noticed that this happens a lot of the time. Every time we shed, like, and, and, and shedding, I, I, I'm saying that, this big shedding didn't happen before in my life as much, but that doesn't mean I haven't been shedding throughout my life, right? There are smaller levels, smaller scales, bigger scales, depending on the scale. But somehow in this whole chaos, the anchor is, is us when we go within ourselves. Yes. That's our anchor, actually. That's why it's like it's like in the dark, mm -hmm. but and I'm I'm sensing my 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 way out of it because there's something in me that is coming out that that is growing. Mm -hmm. My past is not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. The past that I'm trying to hold into it's in me. It's part of me. It's inside of me. Whether it's good or bad, right? And my the future is in my hand. I can't choose where to go. If I trust my experience and my experimentation with the sensing, even though I'm in the dark. And, and, and it's, that's it, it's always this balance. Yeah, yeah, but what you're saying, I think it's so important when it comes to bringing awareness to the anchor of the relationship with the self 
and that the relationship with the self is is the anchor. It's really the only anchor we ever have. And it's pretty astonishing or, again, deliberate that we're told not to develop that relationship because it's a very powerful relationship. And, um, and what I want to draw some attention to also based on this conversation and what you're saying is why it's so important at this moment in time, even if it's not convenient for all people, um, we haven't been told and, and taught how to have this relationship with ourselves. It's, it's new for, for most of us. For all of us, it's pretty new. And for, for some, it's like really new. And mm -hmm. it's like, I don't even know who I am. I don't even know how to sit with myself for two minutes. Mm -hmm. so, so this is, there's so much um, tolerance and kindness and, and space that we need to give ourselves and each other as we start to learn this process, because again, it has been taken away from us. We haven't learned how to do it. And uh, it, I had a friend actually at um, this last retreat center that I was at and she, she made a joke and it was funny. <laughs> but it was, uh, you know, talking about how to, learning how to trust yourself. Mm -hmm. and, um, because I would say like, if you can't trust yourself, who are you trusting? At the end of the day, we should always be trusting ourselves. I know that there's a lot of people in today's age that don't like that because it's like, well, no, you, there's somebody else that knows better than you. Yeah, on certain subjects, but they should always be secondary to people's relationship with themselves. Now that said, and right now, and that's why I'm a little like nervous with some of the, the dialogues going on because it's, you don't have a right to talk. Like, what do you know? Give it, you know, this person knows. Mm -hmm. And I understand where that's coming from i understand why it seems like this person might know but mm -hmm. we have to encourage each other to trust ourselves and mm -hmm. as my friend said at this retreat center that was so funny she was like when i first started when i was first learning how to trust myself uh she goes you know it's funny i was wrong most of the time <laughs> And then it was over time that it was like, oh, okay, now I can trust myself more. Now I can trust myself more. And we start to learn what that really means because it's not about being infallible or invincible or mm -hmm. not being permeated by other people's opinions or information. We can absorb, but we are first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to develop. So for you on that that journey again i bring this up because we're in a very particular moment in time which i know is very controversial to talk about the fact that people need to understand how to trust themselves mm -hmm. there are a lot of people that are like no but they're trusting themselves wrong <laughs> like, okay so i'm gonna touch on that actually yeah. so okay there are a couple of things that a lot of people do not understand at least the way i see awareness and the way i see how it's helping me self-awareness, awareness about everything else. A lot of people do not understand the, the new nuances of that. So you said that a lot of people do not know how to sit with themselves for a couple of minutes. That's very true. But there are people who are who would stay alone, but they are still do not know themselves. Mm. And a lot of people are scared to know them true their true selves and that's when i say sit with yourself right or when when i say trust yourself so i'm trusting yourself is is, is a tricky thing because i'm like your friend yeah <laughs> it, it's it's a learning so process. <laughs> it, it, everything is a learning process and and i'm gonna give a couple of examples here uh at least from life right uh yeah. I, I've never drove before, right? I was in Saudi Arabia. Nobody taught me how to drive. And um, basically, I would be taken in a car by someone who drives me, you know, with my brothers or a driver or whatever, you know, from A to B and then from B to A again. So I wouldn't pay. And I sit in the back seat so sometimes, sometimes the front, depending on who's driving. And I never paid attention to the streets, to the driving. I was like, oh, you know, it's just a place for me, a vehicle, you know, to go. I would never drive, so I'm not interested. So when I started here to learn how to drive, 
I came to Canada and I did not start long. Like, I had my uh, driver license uh, only 2019, actually. So when, when the teacher or, or anyone buddy I would drive with to, to teach me, they say, like, keep your lane or let's say, uh, keep your lane straight or keep your, your speed. The way I understood it, it was like, I need to, for example, push on the gas a certain level. And if I'm a good driver, then that's it. I'm just keeping my foot steady and it's, the speed is not going to change. And it's the same with the lane. Keep your lane or, or be straight on your lane, right? It's like, I have to keep my wheel, you know, steady. That's how it, it meant to me. And I think one of the people that I drove with or me eventually I got was like, no, actually, I do not need to keep it steady, not moving. I need to move mm -hmm. my wheel to keep my car steady or mm -hmm. I need to move my foot back mm -hmm. and forth on the, in the pedal, the gas to keep my speed steady, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the minute when it clicks on you, when you understand. So, so it's the same with trusting yourself. Yes. Great, great metaphor. Thank you. Uh, it, it needs to click that moment because we are or we have been programmed forever. So it's really hard. To, and we have so much inside of us, right? So much conflict inside of us, so much voices inside of us, so many of them talking. Some of them are parents, some of them are friends, some of them are society, some of them are our leaders, some of them are, I don't know. So, so then when you are trying to uh, decide on something, and when I say decision, trust yourself, it's like, well, I mean, yeah, you could trust someone in the information, they are giving you if you know them enough or whatever you think they are trustworthy but when you trust yourself it's like how do you receive this information right it's like what does it mean to you that's when you trust yourself it's not like they are lying or they are wrong or they are they have their own interpretation they have this information they gave it to you maybe without interpretation it's you how does it fit with you how does it feel to you? Where? What does it tell you where to go or what to do or what not to do? Mm. That's when you trust yourself and ask yourself. Do you want to say something? Uh, this is so important. <laughs> so I want us to slow down and break this down. Okay. Go ahead. Um, yes. So somebody, let's just keep going with this particular thing. Let's just break down that entire process. So somebody because this is part of that new way of understanding information. And I've been really, really talking about bringing my own awareness to this on a personal level and also on a societal level, how this is changing mm -hmm. really dramatically right now and how we have to change accordingly. And, and it's for us in the long run, it's much, much better. Mm -hmm. Where before was very controlling, but at the same time, difficult. So <laughs> let's talk about this process. Let me say, it will continue being difficult as we grow and as we learn more, okay? Yeah. So so something new, some new information comes across, um, comes across to us. Something that um, is in some way out of alignment with our own understanding of self. So let's say, let's actually say it's criticism. Let's take it out of the societal context for a moment because it's a little hot right there. But let's um, talk about on a personal note. Let's say it's criticism from someone, right? You're, um, you are. Oh God, what is it? Uh, let's let's pick an insult. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm gonna give you another example from my life. Okay, the person looks at Yes. I mean, that's all I know, right? It's all about my life. Uh, for example. I have a lot of examples in that regard. I'm not sure which one to pick. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm going to give you this uh, example. So let's say drinking. Okay. 
Um, at one point, when I came from my background, right, and then first thing, when I shed everything, it was because all that I believed in shattered almost, right? And so I went into from so much believing mm -hmm. into so much not believing in anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and it's, it was like a pendulum, basically. Took it too far and bam, it has to go the other side, right? Yeah. So, and then I started here meeting people and seeing people and seeing them drinking. I don't know what. And so it's like, and then there were people who would say, oh, and if I say I prefer to drink tea or coffee, right? So if people are like, I'm around people and I don't drink, oh, you do not drink. I don't know what. You are like sort of, you know, uh, retro or you come from your, I don't know, how do you survive you people? It's, it's fun, you know, it's to relax and it is and that and that and that. And, mm -hmm. and I was feeling very uh, sort of out, outsider, right? I would feel um, bad. I would feel uh, I don't belong. I would feel stupid. I would feel all sorts of things because now these people are using uh, something or, or doing something and I'm not doing it just because they say I come from that background. And it's wrong. My background is wrong, right? I don't believe in it, so I am I am wrong. So I tried, but I mean, still I didn't like it. But I still felt every time that as if I am supposed to do the same. And so I, I basically didn't want to go to the meetings or try to avoid or something like that. Try to bring any excuses. Mm -hmm. And then. Of course, as I got to know myself and as I get to stabilize my pendulum and see how I feel about things, trusting myself, right? How do I feel after, let's say, um, I, I try drinking? I don't feel good, right? And it's not about religion. It's not, I mean, if I go back and I understand religion from the perspective that I am in now, I see that religion said, at least the way I know or from my religion or my previous religion is like, it's not good for your health. That's what it said. So it's better to not to use it. So that makes sense to me, right? And then when I come to understand, okay, other people are drinking, and they are enjoying and they say it's, it helps them and I don't know what. Well, other people are not me. They, they may be doing it because they want to or they may be doing it because of the societal pressure that they were putting on me. Mm -hmm. Just following it. So what is it that I want now? What is it that I feel inside myself that aligns with me, my health, my feeling. I am okay or I will refuse to drink if I do not want to, if I'm pressured. Maybe these are not the good people I need to be with. Because I have the right to, to refuse. And especially that I've seen people from here, eventually, of course, I've seen people, Canadian, Americans, they say, no, I don't drink, and they are respected. So it's like, why, why they did this to me? Because I was allowing it, right? I was being affected by my thoughts that everything I came from was wrong and mm -hmm. by people who are probably affected. So, so you, I mean, does that, does that make sense? The, the, the trusting yourself, right? It's like, what is it that I want? And there is nothing wrong about with what I want. Does it make me a social uh, outcast? Does it make me uh, a weirdo? Does it make me nothing? 
Yeah, I love that story too, Layla. Thank you for sharing it for a few, many reasons. One, because you did do, you brought your awareness into your past and where you came from and the belief structures that, right, not drinking alcohol is associated with a belief system and a culture that in many ways you, you had rebelled against or had, um, you know, had, had, could, you could acknowledge the fallacies that ex may have existed or the, the pressure that wasn't working for you in your life within certain cultural restraints. And then pull, but the thing is you don't have to, you can also make your own decision about every That's single it. little, exactly. little piece of it. So it's good. Drinking is, you, find, you don't need to have a judgment for other people or how they do or, you know, whatever it is on, Nobody needs to have a judgment about it. But if it's not good for you, it's not good for you. It's nothing to do with your background or this just, I don't That's like it. it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's um, it. And even, even my background, right? It's like just the, because I was, I was raised by those people who interpreted everything to their own agenda doesn't make everything there wrong. wrong. Exactly. 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 And that's where it is also to trust your judgment. What works for me? There is there information there that I find actually, oh, I'm finding that they are really interesting. True. At least for me, I find them true in my life now. Their information is like, ah, oh, no, that's okay. Thank yep. you. I don't want that. Yep. Yep. You know, I've had it just to add another, um, uh, oh, <laughs> a lot of hair, <laughs> um, <laughs> to add another example. Um, the, uh, you know, I've had this happen many times with uh, feedback. Okay, so for example, in a, uh, as an actor, when we're being trained, so it'd be the same thing in any sort of, any sort of performance, right? Mm -hmm. Athleticism, performance. But you go to see coaches. You go to see coaches to work at getting better. And I use this story in a lot of um, my like not teachings, but guidance on sort of how to develop a creative relationship with yourself. Mm -hmm. Because in the beginning, when I was going around to all of these different teachers, of course, every single coach and every single teacher is like, this is the way. <laughs> this is it. If you want to be great, if you want this, then you need to follow my advice, my mm -hmm. structure, my way of doing it. And, um, and of course I was young and, and, um, and hadn't really worked on a relationship with myself, or at least I kind of actually was very, had a very strong sense of self when I was younger. And then I went through my teen years and my late mm -hmm, mm -hmm. kind of were like, and then you start shaking. yeah, other people know better than you. And you know, you're not, and you have too much confidence in this area. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Make sure that I go back down yes. and, um, and so I did, and I and I went to all these coaches, and I'll tell you, the coaches had some really great methodologies, and I learned, well, that's part of the story, right? So I go to all of these different coaches, everybody has the magical method, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm trying to master their way of doing it, mm -hmm. their, their method, you know, they're this, and, and I was getting much better, I really was, but at the same time, I knew my work wasn't that impactful. Um, mm -hmm. I knew something was still not connected. And I finally went to see a coach after many years who sat down with me and he said, you know, Carly, you, you watched my work. And he was like, you obviously know a lot about acting. You have obviously, um, you're very crafted. But I can see your work. I need you to trust yourself. And I looked at him and I said, I actually... I don't know what you mean. Yes. Yes. I don't, I don't know how to do that. Yes. And it took me relearning. It was him as my coach, not him teaching me his method, but him encouraging me to work on my Your own methodology yes. and understanding that you know, if there was something from one coach or one teacher that was working, great, use it. And trend. And the thing is, I was always naturally doing this, but I was always told that there was something wrong with doing that, right? Mm -hmm. Because other people's egos- Because it's different people. than theirs. Exactly. And exactly. so, and, and that was the beginning of my own awareness, sort of understanding empowerment versus disempowerment, mm -hmm. um, great teachers versus controllers. 
yes. and egocentric sort of stuff, which is fine. There's still places. And, and that's what I was going to say is that I could still take the feedback from coaches or feedback from other people and like, oh, you should kind of work on this or the scene could be better if you did that. And, and I can listen to it and go, hmm, no. That, that's a perfect example because basically my family, it's a big family and I have like, we are 15 siblings. How many? 15. Oh yeah, that's right. I remember when you mentioned this in your first interview. Holy moly. <laughs> and basically, let's say one younger than me and the rest, 13 of them were knowing more than me. They are older, so they know more than me. So I have 13 coaches plus my parents. So short, long story short is that after I came and I started recognizing myself and building connection with myself, started to learn about myself, I learned that everything they taught me, I mean, there are a few things that could be good, but just like you did, we listen to these people and a lot of people will give us what they want to give us because it, it, it's their method, it's their ego because it has to be right and if it's not right that means they are wrong and if they are wrong it's not they are not worth enough so everybody's going to tell you that. So what you did and, and actually I have, there are people who like that. I mean, myself as a coach, there are people who tell me, I want you to give me step one, two, three, four, five. I was like, I will never do that. I am, I am a coach that I want you to discover what is work, what works for you, just like I discovered it for myself. That's how you get the freedom of choice. That's how you use your intelligence aware, like your, your awareness intelligently. I'm not gonna come to you and use your awareness. Right. You are the one who's gonna use it, right? Right. But there are people who love that because they do not want to connect with themselves, right? In in your case, it's like you learn or in anybody's case or my case right we learn and then that's when you use your awareness it's like you have now these tools right you have a hammer you have screwdriver you have screws you have nails you have i don't know what some people they tell you you have to go and hit a nail everywhere you go right even if it does need screwdriver or it needs something else but if you are aware and you trust yourself, then you are going to use the nail when you feel that it's needed. We are gonna, you are going to use the screwdriver screws when they are needed. You are going to use the glue when it's needed. You are going to use... So it's like you pick and choose from all these methods, from all these teaching, and you make your own. Exactly. You add it to yourself. And that's why I would like to go back to sitting with yourself and knowing yourself. Why is it so scary? Mm. Because guess what? Our selves are not all great. Yeah, it's not, uh, nobody and likes to look in the mirror. Especially when we are seeing ourselves different or we are projecting ourselves different than what we think we are. Yeah. So that's the hardest part. I can sit with myself, and I know a lot of people, they sit with themselves, but they are playing games all the time. They are living in that game. They are being that whatever character or avatar in that game. Yeah. Or, defense though too i mean the thing is i would love to talk about what it is to kind of sit in yourself this energy that you're speaking to as far as finding yourself because when you say avatar and these other things it's very true this entire world our society is really set up to put people in boxes exactly. I work with branding and marketing everything is about like make me perfectly wrapped up so that i make sense to myself and other people Mm -hmm. Interest so can sell Instagram. basically myself or my yeah. service or whatever, or they like me, so they would like me. So I am, yeah. So people like me, but actually, you're right. At the core of all of this is actually a Western principle of um, 
of being sellable. And mm -hmm. that is uh, because it's the underground, it's the one of the underlying foundations of our entire social, economic, educational, at our, our entire foundation for the last hundred years, especially, has really been set up on the pillar of learning how to sell and sell from a, an economic standpoint, everything built into a commodity, including the human being themselves. And so that's, um, and we can, that's a fun conversation to go into fully. Um, but it, but it's true. And, and it's a huge block when it comes to us developing a relationship with ourselves, a, a, a spiritual, of being boxless. What does it mean to be boxless? Well, the thing, the, the funny thing is that the Western society wants to always box you to sell you, put you in, in sort of like a gift box. The Eastern society, at least the one I came from, it puts you in a, in, in a, in a dirty box, basically, or something, because then you should always be humble. Yes. Well, we could you, should, you should never sell yourself. Basically, you are you are never good enough. You right. are you know you do not know you have no strength because if you start talking about that, like you are not humble, you are so <laughs> arrogant. So it's like you are doing everything is a sin, right? And imagine now I'm coming from that society where I was like I'm always like oh, I'm not good, I'm not good. Nobody talks to me. Right? I was like here's like you have to start talking about yourself you have to start selling yourself you have to talk to them. it was a dilemma because i had no idea who i am right, right who i was who i am supposedly to sell now i do not know yeah and that's it the energy the energy to go back to the self and i mean it's the basis of my, my, my coaching and, and it's an experience I had it, which opened my eyes completely. I think I, I've tried with you um, a little bit in my first uh, session when we tried the meditation, that, that meditation, it's a little bit more, you know, deeper uh, and, and more complicated. But what I would say is that we are, comprised of several avatars mm. or if you wish you uh, like uh, Carl Jung calls them the archetype right yep each one of us we have many of these archetypes we have many hats we wear many roles we do and the fact that we are showing ourselves as one of like, oh, I am the good girl, right? It's like, I am the best, helpful, I always give. So people will, when they talk about me, it's like, oh, she's a giver, she's, that's only a role I'm playing. I am a human, I'm more complicated than that. And the first thing is that I need to accept that I sometimes freaking hate to give. <laughs> I do not want to feed, give any to anyone, right? Or I do not, or I'm tired. I do not want to, you know, or I'm always smiling. Well, sometimes I want to just shout or just cry or so. So we need to accept that we are what we show and the complete opposite of it. Yeah. We need to accept that we have the capacity at least for absolute evil. Yep. Because darkness or shadow, if you want to call it, and light is, is like the yin and yang. It's, it's all in all of us. And the darkness is needed for us to understand the other side. And the light is needed to understand the darkness. They complement each other. Yep. And if we use correctly, doing our best not to hurt other people, but of course we can't always not hurt, right? But not do it in, in a way we are just gonna be mean and you know. Wait. So so that's that's the way it's like I used to be before, for example, it's like I'm I'm set, I'm, I have to be a good girl, right? I was raised 
conser conver conservatively. Uh, I, I want to go to to heaven. I want God to love me, so I'm not gonna. Uh, I don't know. Lie. I'm gonna, not gonna do this. I'm not gonna do that. Da, 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 da. And then, of course, you see a lot of people doing everything they are telling you not to do, right? And and you start feeling like the guy caught me. And then you are in situations where you are, let's say, afraid of your life. So you start maybe saying some lies, and and then you hate yourself for it or whatever, just because you are thinking, oh, I, I am not supposed to do any of that, right? And this is just a simple example. And and then we go on with, with life. I go on with life, like I have this lie or I did this that was supposedly a sin, right? And I hate myself for it and I try to block it for the rest of my life, not to think about it, not to face it, and pretend that I am something else to and exaggerate. So then I would forget or sort of repent on what I've done. Mm. Right? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Or hide it, right? Or do something from underneath where people do not see me while I'm doing something else in front of them. And and that's the problem I find. It's like if we put all our cards on the table, on the table. Mm -hmm. to ourselves. Exactly. That's the first person we need to be honest with. That's why I say awareness is all about honesty, 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 honesty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then without judgment, meaning, well, I can lie. I, I, I'm not supposed to judge myself like, oh, I'm a bad person. It's like, well, I can't lie, but I don't have to do it if I can avoid it, right? Uh, I can do other bad things, but I don't have to do them if I can avoid them. I can be jealous, you know, or I can be hateful, or I can be angry, or I can, I don't know, smash things. But I don't have to. Mm -hmm. So, but the fact is like, oh, I, I can be, you know, uh, hateful. It's like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm bad. I, I, I cannot face that, you know? So I think that's the problem always with people. It's like, they can't face the fact that they can do things. Or some people, they say it's like, I don't care. You want me as I am. I will lie. I'll hurt you. I'll do whatever. And that's how I, how I am accepting myself. Yeah. But no. And that's usually not, that's, um, I know many, uh, many, many stories such as, such as that. And I find it's usually oftentimes like just really heavy self-defense mechanism. Exactly. Um, because there's a lot of pain underneath and that's it. That that's it. we can, I but, don't want you to hurt me. I'm going to hurt you first. Yeah, exactly. And and I'm going to be real honest about it. I'm not going to hide it. And it, it, it's actually, yeah. Um, I actually find that a lot that can exist in a lot of, um, uh, a lot of men, it, but more common women have it too. Can definitely, it can be our masculine energy within, within women, mm -hmm. but, um, but very common with men, very yeah. common in the masculine, as a masculine self-protect, uh, self-protect, uh, Protective mechanism, yeah. Yes. Mechanism. Yes. Um, but I want us to kind of wrap up. Yeah, I was looking at the time. I was like, wow, it's, it's already. Uh... But I love this, and I want. Um, I just kind of want to wrap up what you're what you're speaking to also here, and and getting back to our theme of finding calm and chaos. If we can use this moment in time, as we're all being disrupted and disrupted so that we can look at all of our cards and we can do this as individuals that's what we should do as individuals because <laughs> once we do look at our cards we are going to have that stability right once we know who we are and it doesn't mean we are not going to change it doesn't mean we are not going to figure more things we are going to you know uh basically dig the dirt right sometimes the things that we have been blocking but there is more stability there within ourselves. Definitely. I mean, I say should. I, I prefer not to say should. But I, I, I believe <laughs> that this is a very important thing for everyone to start practicing. I agree. And that kind of uh, when we when we can take this time to go within and lay out all of the cards. What I like that you're speaking about, and I had another conversation a lot of these conversations it's so funny because this is what's happening this is what's happening on an individual and a collective level right now is that 
before we can see and face the darkness, so to speak, understand what it is outside of us, which it is, and it's real and it needs to be faced. And there is absolutely, a absolutely. But we have to understand how it operates. And the only way that we can truly understand external patterns is, is if we understand internal patterns. Absolutely. If, if we find, so I love the, take the time in the middle of this chaos, let it disrupt. Let it shake you to your bones. That's it. Let it That's push it. every trigger and, and look at what is it bringing up? What's the Look problem? at it. Face it. Face it. And... and don't just be curious and see where does it take you and what do you do with it? Yes. How can you, let's say, if this isn't, you don't like it much, okay, how do you improve it? Right? Yeah. yeah. But don't reject it. Don't bury it. Don't hide it because don't play bo a poker face with yourself. Yeah. Because yeah. what's going on outside, what's happening is a result from what's inside of us. Yes. And there is a, um, a cleansing, a purge. Every time that we self-disrupt, every time that we go through chaotic moments in the shedding process in our life, as we've talked about, it is not easy. It is hot for painful. It is very hard and painful. Because it's a lot of wounds that are coming up. And it is a lot of facing our own shadow and collective shadow and seeing things that we don't want to see. That's the thing that, you know, that I've found very personal, very difficult, very challenging in the last, in the last few years as well. I've had to see within myself and within larger society, a depth of pain and, um, and darkness that is not convenient. <laughs> no, no. Not Actually, when you see it in a societal level, it's like, yeah. it gets scary. It's scary. And, and, and even within and then, you know, but to see it within the self, but I have to keep reminding myself, and for me anyways, at this moment in time, finding calm in this chaos is see the opportunity to heal. And if you're looking to understand how bad it is outside and what to do and, and how to see and to face that, I think we have to really understand it within ourselves. If you cannot find Absolutely. the enemy Absolutely. within you, if you can't find that archetype or that energy within you that's manipulative that's hard right all these things that were like ah, no i'm not no i'm not that's everybody else mm -hmm. if we can't acknowledge where that exists within us then we it's just going to increase it's just going to increase exactly there's no there's it no feeds way. into the into the outer shadow that is being rejected from everyone else too yes so when we own it, it it's that's it it's like the, the 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 hurt and the pain and and the danger of it dissipate in a way right it's like now you are more in control and it's not about controlling or over controlling in a way that you are pressuring or you're like pressing it or 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 burying it's 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 different it's really the acknowledgement exactly exactly it exists in you it's okay. Okay. I. It doesn't have to be expressed in a bad way. Yep. Yep. And I'm fine. I can move forward. Yep. And I can accept and and talk. It makes it so much easier. I was having a conversation with a friend the other night, and she's um, very angry with a lot of people, which I understand. Um, I understand where that anger comes from. Uh, but yet it's very funny because there's no understanding of other people. Mm -hmm. Can't fully see, you know, if we're jumping to that, uh, it, once we can really dive into all of our cards and our own sides, then it's so much easier to have compassion and yes. love people that, and instead of trying to judge that we can actually try to understand people that normally we would not um, and create space for all of us to go through this chaotic time period with humility mm -hmm. and a real deep desire to see the truth, whatever it is, exactly. whatever it is, whatever, whatever it, is. it is, but we can do it together. I really believe that we can. And that I think, you know, it'll be interesting to see in the next few years. My hope, my prayer is that we can do this inner work so that we can start coming together to really, really figure out what, 
what is underneath, what, what truths do we need to face r- very clearly as a global society today? Um, and, but yes, it all starts at the individual level. We can't have those conversations. We can't have those dialogues if we do not acknowledge what must be healed within so that we can see the other. And take responsibility to heal it too. And take response. Well, yeah, definitely take responsibility to heal what we can in this life, and the Especially rest within ourselves, right? Yeah, the rest is like we do the best we can, people. One lifetime out of many. It's a, it's a big lifetime. I'll say that. But oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> well, thank you. I I got. I really appreciate. Like, thank, thank you for you. going through this with me today, and um, and with all of us. And if anybody has any questions for Layla or wants to work on, wants a guide going through, because that sh- that shadow work, that facing of all of those cards within us is not easy to do alone. And so um, if you all of Layla's connection is below the video and you can find links to other videos talking about um, awareness intelligence, subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more on Um, all different kinds of leadership development and uh, eventually we'll be getting into some exercises and stuff too which i'm excited thank you everyone it's great to be here (laughs) bye